Trust that exactly where you are is where you're meant to be. So keep your chin up. So your crown doesn't fall. Remember your royalty. Hey, YouTube, and hello to everybody listening to my podcast from The Guru, and welcome. Today, I want to have a conversation about oils, butters, and carrier oils, along with the essential oils, all right? I want to dive deep into this conversation. As you're coming in the, the chat, give me a two and let me know if whether or not you can hear me okay, because I want to make sure that all of you can hear me well before we hop into this video. So again, give me a two if you can hear me because we have to make sure that you can hear me before we jump into this lesson. All right, now I am going to go ahead and leave this video up. Hello, Vicky. Hey, Maya. Hey, Felicia. Hey, Cassandra. Hey, Lady B. How are you doing? Hey, Lady Fox. Can't hear you loud and clear. Okay, good. So, Really quick, before we get started, I want to know how many of you are confused about oils and essential oils and how you're supposed to use it? How many of you are confused on if whether or not you should be using oil in your hair at all? All right. The reason that I wanted to have this conversation is because I understand that a lot of people are confused. Hey, Evie Wilson. How are you, boo? Hey, TC. So I want to have this conversation because I know that so many people are confused and I am going to have a real moment and say that I get, sometimes I will get irritated and I'm just having a transparent moment, right? And I want to apologize to everybody that can hear the sound of my voice because most times I'm just being honest going through this with, you know, all of the arguments that people like to have about products, it gets very, very annoying to have to say and give the same answer over and over again. So I want to apologize to people that didn't know. All right. So we've seen this comment quite a few times, or at least I have seen this comment quite a few times where people are like, okay, hey, I thought you said don't put oil at all on your hair, just wash it and leave it out. Isn't that what you said? because you'll see me do a video where I may do um use some essential oils on my scalp right because I have a chest or I may use an oil on my hair as I'm detangling right because every product has a use and because of the team natural movement right because of everything that happened with the whole team natural community, what has happened, people are confused. People don't understand that all products are tools because, and I'm, I'm not getting on the team natural community, but this is what we're repairing ourselves from because so many people have been mixing, you know, there are so many videos right now. You can go online and see a YouTuber telling you, Hey, take some conditioner that's already made, put some oil, drop some essential oil in and you guys think that this is how you use hair products, but that's not it, all right? So let's get into what essential oils are, what carrier oils are, what butters are, and then I'll explain to you how you're supposed to use it because like I said, I'm just being honest, this comment drives me insane, all right? Because the what happens is because you guys are a little confused, it'll be certain times where you'll come and you'll say, hey, like I thought you said don't use this. You contradicting yourself, but I'm not, okay? Because what you guys have been listening to is people who've been playing in hair and products, all products are tools to be used in certain instances. And there are certain instances where you will see me use a butter, where you will see me use a carrier oil oil, where you will see me use essential oil, but there are reasons for all of these products, right? And if we get into the science of hair, we can stop trying to argue with each other because what we do, and the reason that this comment and comments like this irritate me is because it's like, instead of us having the energy of let's learn from each other, it's like, aha, I caught you. I caught you. You contradicting yourself. I caught you instead of trying to learn. 
All right. And that's what I want us to do. Give me a five if you with me. Hey, Lemon Drop Boo. Listen, Lemon Drop has been out here commenting on all of my videos and really trying to learn all right and let me drop we have a conversation that is coming just because of you you've inspired me to have this one conversation about hair textures and everything so everybody give a shout out to lemon drop because the lemon drop is an og here now all right it's super official so let's get back into this what are essential oils and here is Wikipedia's version. I'm giving you guys Wikipedia's version, but I've been doing this for 17 years. So I know it like the back of my hand, but in front of you, you're going to see the Wikipedia version. So you know that I'm not making up anything and pulling anything out of my butt. Anything that you get here from me is going to be science, right? And when I say science, please understand when people are like, oh, science is wrong. Listen, science is the obsession on the study of God, period. A scientist is obsessed with studying God's creation, which is hu the human body or the atmosphere or plants. It just depends on what type of scientist you are. But science is the study of God period. So when we say, oh, sometimes science is wrong, what you're really doing is arguing with God's creation because that's what I'm studying. Okay. 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 So when we're talking about essential oils, an essential oil is a extremely, the most concentrated form of a plant, of an herb, of a seed, of anything, right? It is its most powerful substance so to give you an example one bottle just one small bottle so you see like the little bottle of essential oils right and give me a two if you still with me give me a two if you still with me that small bottle of essential oils that you see like an orange oil just that small bottle of essential orange oil is equivalent to about 150 oranges right? 150 oranges. So it is so highly concentrated that essential oils are medicine. Okay. So when you guys go inside of a, a, a pharmacy, right? Like volume, for an example, volume was extracted from valerian root. So valerian root is the is nature's version of volume, the most powerful version. You can drink some real organic valerian root tea and be on your butt, okay? So understand the oils are the most potent version of a plant, the most potent version of a flower or anything. So an essential oil can never be used on the scalp or on the skin directly because in it will set in weathering either of the hair shaft or you will get a lot of damage to the scalp. So a essential oil must be carried by a carrier oil. All right. That's the only way you can do it. So a carrier oil is going to be classified as your almond oils, your walnut oils. All right. Your your um, coconut oils and different things of that nature. That's where all of these different oils are broken down into. So, for example, when we're talking about peppermint oil, peppermint essential oil, that is a essential oil and you cannot just put essential carrier oh, carrier lord you cannot just put the essential oil of peppermint straight and directly on the scalp because over time you will damage the follicle and you will cause the follicle to die because it's too strong it's too potent so you need a carrier oil and a carrier oil is exactly what it sounds like it carries the essential oil to the part of the body that it needs all right. So when we're talking about treating, let's say somebody who has um, a low sebum level, right? And the low sebum, if you are new to my channel, sebum is the natural oil that your body is producing. So I'm not going to go too deep into it here because with their guru VIP, there is a full hour long lesson on this. So I'm not about to, you know, dig into their stuff. So they mad at me. But let's talk about Elang Elang oil, right? So Elang Elang oil is known for a treatment, right? So if I have a client, as, as a scientist, if I have a client who has a low sebum level, right? If she has or she or he has a low sebum level, after we've already done stuff to remove the dead skin cells from the scalp and things of that nature, can't give y'all all the tea. 
After they've done that and I know everything's good, now we have to tell that sebaceous gland, hey, baby, we need you. So what I do, we'll get a mixture of a carrier oil that is non-comedogenic. That's why I've been teaching you guys about the difference between comedogenic oil and non-comedogenic oil. A comedogenic oil is one that is going to block the follicle. So if I'm trying to treat the scalp with an essential oil and I need this oil to carry it into the scalp to treat a specific thing, to kill a specific bacteria on the scalp, to increase something directly on the scalp, then I need an oil that will penetrate so it can get there and kill it from the outside if I need to kill it on the external level, right? So in this case, I would have my client mix a carrier oil with ylang-ylang oil, and this will ignite the sebum production. But this is the thing. It is a treatment. And this is what I mean when I'm saying don't put oil on the scalp on a regular basis. Don't try to be combative. What I mean when I say this is the simple fact that if you are using an oil, an essential oil on the scalp, it is for a treatment. The same way if you go to a doctor's office and you have to get a treatment for something, there is a small a window that your doctor is going to tell you, hey, I need you to use this medication. And after that certain period of time that you are using that medication, if you keep using it, it's going to do more harm than good to the body. And that's what I'm saying. If you see me putting an essential oil on my scalp, I am very transparent telling you guys my body deals with hydronitis superativa. So if you ever see me putting oil on my scalp, it is because I am carrying, I am having that carrier oil put something on my scalp. Now, if if we are going to get into how long essential oil sit on the scalp, this is why you need to go professionals. Because if you know what an essential oil is treating, then you know how long you're supposed to be using it. You know if whether or not, depending on what the scalp is dealing with, if it should be left on or if it should be washed right off. But because you guys are so used to listening to what women have to say on YouTube and on social media, you think that what works for one girl on YouTube is going to work for you and it doesn't work that way. The same way that if you had something that you were dealing with in your digestive system, you can't just listen to what one person says on YouTube because your entire body, the system that your body runs on is different from this person that you watched on YouTube. And it's the same thing when it comes to your hair. So that's what I try. Hey, everybody. So that's what I try to explain to everybody. When we're talking about carrier oils, a carrier oil is a carrier of medicine into the follicle or into a certain part of the skin. And once that stage of treatment is over, that essential oil or that oil is supposed to be stopped. So when I tell y'all, don't put oil on the scalp, don't put essential oils on the scalp, I mean that. When I'm saying that, I'm not saying it because I'm like, oh, no, other people are wrong. I'm telling you that unless you have some type of follicle disorder or some type of hair shaft disorder that you are treating with an essential oil or with a carrier oil, then you do not put carrier oils on your scalp on a regular basis. Because if you do, you will cause follicle damage. That is what I'm saying. Okay. And we're going to and we're going to get to this. We'll get to this in a second. OK, please give me a minute with that. It's annoying as hell, by the way. But we're going to get to it in a second. But um, so that's something that I want y'all to understand. OK, carrier oils and secondly, carrier oils are broken down into two categories. Right. So when we're talking about carrier oils, we have some carrier oils that are comedogenic and some carrier oils that are non-comedogenic. The non-comedogenic oils are the oils that do not block the follicle. Those are the carrier oils that you combine with essential oils. So you don't combine essential oils with coconut oil. Why? A coconut oil is a five on the comedogenic scale. 
one being least likely to block the pores and the follicles and five being the most likely to block the pores and the follicles, right? So if you are trying to carry medicine into the scalp, it makes no sense to carry it in with something that's going to block the follicle and block oxygen flow after it's fixed. That's what doesn't make sense. That's why you have to use a carrier oil that is non-comedogenic. Now, when we start talking about carrier oils that are comedogenic, they have their place as well. A comedogenic oil could be used to base the scalp before a relaxer, depending on what type of comedogenic oil it is, like a coconut oil, all right? Or some uh, comedogenic oils like avocado oil can be used as a lint retention batter. Or a comedogenic oil like aloe butter can be used as lint retention or a aloe oil can be used as a lint retention. But we have to understand that aloe butter and aloe the aloe butter and the aloe oil that is pressed, cold pressed or heat pressed is a lot different from the pure avocado leaf that you're getting from the grocery store. It is not the same product in any way, shape or form. So it's two completely different things. That's why I employ you to start studying herbs, like not studying by watching videos, not studying by reading YouTube videos, but get five, six, seven, eight different books and study herbs, study them. And then you'll understand in what way you can use them. But you have to first respect the essence of an essential oil. First respect the essence of a carrier oil before you do that. So when we get into avocados, I am a herbalist. I love every herb on this planet, including avocado, every fruit, every vegetable. So first of all, when we're talking about avocados, the most nutritious part of the avocado isn't the meat, it's the seed. If you really want to get into that, which we will in videos coming soon. But the most nutritious part of the avocado is the actual seed, right? And I make a tea out of that and drink it on a regular video coming soon. Like I said, let me know in the comments right now if you want to see that. But what is super duper dope about avocados, avocado is pure fat. It's pure fat. Soluble fat is fat. 100% fat. All right, 100% fat. But the the key role in it is is oleic acid. Now the oleic acid that is inside of avocado oil has so or just in avocado period is so powerful. Oh my god, especially when you ingest it into the into the body, but on the skin it produces a lipid barrier because your 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 scalp does not have the same type of digestive system that your stomach does. So your your, your stomach and your digestive system can break down every part and all of those uh, botanicals and all of that different stuff. It could break everything down, but you need like a machine to physically break everything down or a certain type of distillation process to be able to break it down enough to receive that oleic acid in a way that won't block the follicle. But with you just putting pure avocados on the scalp, what it does, it creates a lipid barrier over the scalp or you put in pure avocado oil that is comedogenic directly on the scalp. It produces a lipid barrier on top of the scalp that makes it almost impossible for your scalp to breathe like it's supposed to because it acts to repair from, from the inside. If you ate it and it broke it down, what it does, it repairs a damaged scalp if you eat it, right? But from the outside, it also repairs, but it does it in a more aggressive way where it's like, hey, I'm going to just put an extra layer on the scalp. But if it's on the ends going from mid shaft to ends, it's not bad at all. It's amazing for length retention because the oleic acid creates a lipid barrier. All right. And that goes into the carrier oil, right? Avocado oil is considered a carrier oil that is on the comedogenic side that will block the follicle because that's its job. Understand that products are tools. They're supposed to be used as tools. And if, for example, if you go into um, a car repair shop, right? I don't know nothing about cars. You hear me? You go into a car repair shop 
you will lose your mind. There are so many freaking products everywhere, but you don't hear a mechanic like these uh, mechanic companies really trying to get over on us. Every aisle you go into, it's a different thing. I don't know what none of this stuff is. That doesn't mean that the companies that make all of the, the equipment for cars are trying to scam you. That means that you don't know about how to operate these tools. There are a bunch of tools in this building that you don't know how to operate. So you then have to go learn how to operate these tools. The beauty supply store isn't full of a bunch of products because they want to play y'all. The beauty supply store is full of a bunch of tools. If you go into a beauty supply store, you will notice that each row in the beauty supply store holds a different type of product. These are different aisles for different tools to accomplish different styles, to accomplish different things. So that's something that I really want you guys to think about because oleic acid, the reason, again, that avocados work in the hair is because it produces a lipid barrier that helps to retain length. Nobody ever knew why avocados work. Y'all just saw Cardi B putting it in her hair and you put it in your hair. Nobody ever took the time to stop and actually do the research and Google to see why it works. You just believe something somebody say. And then when the 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 long term effects come, then you try to figure out what's going wrong. But by that time, it's too late because the hair is not it doesn't rejuvenate itself like the rest of the body does. All right. I'm going to get to a couple of y'all questions, finish up these slides and then we're going to head out because I don't want to keep y'all that long today. Essential oils, wait, essential oils and the carrier oils not interfere with the production and the, uh, well, absolutely they do. The only, that's why I'm constantly telling y'all, don't put it on the scalp. Not because I'm trying to contradict myself, but unless you're treating something, for example, for example, what I just told you guys about Ylang Ylang essential oil, right? Ylang Ylang essential oil, if you have low sebum production, because let's say, for an example, your practices have been wrong. Let's say you've been greasing your scalp since you was little and you don't notice any oil coming out of your scalp at all. That's because your sebum production is low because your follicle been blocked because your scalp is like, she going to keep us blocked. What the hell are we going to produce sebum for? Right? So... I would have to, my plan of action, like I'm saying, I'm not going to just put it all out there because people pay me for this. But after we clear the scalp and we reset the hair growth cycle, then the thing that I prescribe to my clients, okay, have this certain regimen of Elang Elang oil and the Elang Elang oil will increase. The sebum production, it will increase the sebum production, but peep game, an essential oil needs to be mastered. You cannot just keep using the Elang Elang oil because once your sebum is, once it's regulated, right, tops, I'll be like, okay, do it for two weeks, tops, two weeks tops. If you go longer than those two weeks, you will then get seborrheic dermatitis. Seborrheic dermatitis is an overproduction of sebum within the sebaceous gland. So if you put too much Ylang Ylang oil on the scalp, you'll get an infection because essential oils cannot be played with. You need to know them. You need to understand them. You need to respect them. But y'all just go around taking essential oils, dumping it in your shampoo, dumping it in your conditioners. Like you, you can't do that. You cannot do that. All right. So it's not it's not the same thing. Yes. If you do do it wrong. Yes, absolutely. It will affect that. All right. What is your view on the study saying relaxers call cancer? Please make a video about it. I love you so much, Maya, but I'm not making a video about it. I'm just not. You know why? If you go on YouTube and you Google it, I've already done that years ago. And every time black women decide to do something else, like notice nobody was talking about relaxers or how relaxers were bad until now. All black women who were anti straightening their hair are now going back to relaxers. So now that all of all now that black women are no longer team natural, now that all of these brands are no longer getting y'all money because they see that y'all see the bullshit now they trying to make all of y'all feel bad about relaxing y'all hair but peep game if y'all all go and do the research on the 
chemical compound. And on the chemical complex of relaxers, that chemical compound is the same exact chemical compound that white women and women who get perms, because black women get relaxers, okay? And women with naturally straight hair get perms to go curly. And black women get relaxers to go straight, but it is the same chemical compound. So let me ask you a question. Why is it that year after year after year after year, there are constantly studies on cancer being caused by black women getting relaxers, but there is yet to be a study where anybody does anything on cancer or, or, or fibroids or anything being caused by perms, because you can get extensive scalp burns by perms too. When I was in cosmetology school on Wednesdays, that's all we did was perms. And they got intense scalp burns the same way you get a burn with a relaxer if the scalp is not based. But America only focuses on black women. The higher black women go, the lower they send them. And black women do it every time. Y'all let them do it. So they're going to keep doing it because y'all going to hop on whatever bandwagon, whatever the majority is talking about. That's what black women are going to start talking about. Black women don't think for themselves. So they're going to produce this new narrative. Y'all all going to follow it. All of the people who've been pushing y'all, no, no flat irons. Now they're going to be the no relaxer police. And y'all are going to fall for it. This happened already. They constantly do it over and over and over again because it's easy money. Because black women fall for the same shit every single time. It's easy money. If I was a white person who wanted to take advantage of y'all, I would do it too. Because y'all easy money every time. And I'm sorry if that make anybody feel away, but this is not the first time. What are we talking about? Why are black women still arguing about relaxers when every race of woman on this planet uses the same chemical complex in their hair? But white women, y'all, black women don't know nothing about it. You know why? Women don't get on social media calling, telling other white women that they not proud to be white women because they get in perms. Because white women get perms on a regular basis. Do y'all know how many perms I've done in my career? More than I can count. But white women that got perms, they don't want to be recorded. So we don't post it to YouTube. But white women get perms more than black women get relaxers. That is a fact. But white women don't get down on each other for getting perms. They be like, yes, sus, you look cute. Yes, bitch. Yes, yes. Black women do that to each other. That's the difference. And that's my opinion. And I'm sorry, I'm not making a video about it because I've been doing hair for 17 years. And when I was in cosmetology school, they was arguing about this. Uh, relaxers cause cancer. Okay, so what about the what what do what what do perms cause? Why aren't we talking about that? Why are we only talking about relaxers? It's bullshit. And if y'all fall for it, y'all fall for it. I don't care. Anyway, I just tuned in. I'm not sure if you addressed it already or not, but what exactly is a serum? Is it not an oil? No, a serum and an oil are two completely different things. That's a great question. That's what I mean. A serum and an oil are two completely different things. A serum has a way, way smaller molecular weight than an oil or an essential oil does. So if you if you think about it, a chemist, right? This is a chemist's job. A chemist knows how to take a, 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 a avocado oil that has a large particle, put it in a machine and shrink those particles. Now they have a serum. And those particles are so small that they don't coat. A serum does not coat or sit on the hair shaft. A serum goes directly into the cortex, directly into the cortex. Serums do not sit on top of the hair shaft. They're completely different. And serums are not mixed with essential oils. Serums are formulated to do a very specific thing. That's why after you get a silk press, a, a hairstylist who knows what she's doing, she's not putting oil on your hair. She's not putting essential oil on your hair. She's putting serum on there. And then she's going to wrap you, put you up under that cold dryer because that serum is getting into the cortex, smoothing everything out. And then she's sitting you under that dryer with that cold air and that cold air is about to close that cuticle and seal that serum up in there. Not seal it in there, but let it let it sit until you wash it back out. 
And the serum isn't blocking anything. The serum went right in there to the cortex to do what it's supposed to do. And that's it. It's a difference. Great question. I use serum after blow drying my hair. I use a small job. Hey. Yeah, there you go. Good enough for me. Listen, you want to know why they showed them putting it on the scalp? Because, listen to me, the consumer runs everything. If they know that you care nothing about the science and all you want to do is be the girl that you saw on social media, that's what they're going to promote, you guys. YouTubers haven't been showing y'all anything but applying stuff to the scalp. That's what y'all are. That's the only reason you're on their page in the first place. The only reason you went to the products page in the first place is because a YouTuber told you to. So what do you think they're going to do when they put their advertisement program together? What they're going to do is make sure that the model is emulating to the best of her ability, the person that you're following. So that way, when you come to the site, you'll be like, okay, yeah, this is it. She looked just like the girl that told me to buy it. Come on, y'all. Like, come on. I love y'all. But, like, come on. Come on. And then you get started in the cycle of overcorrection, fixing problems with problems. Exactly. There's a lot of info online, but I started using the serum because my hairstylist will always use it on me after blow drying it out since I was little. Yeah. Yeah. And and this is the thing. This is the thing. When when y'all go back, if and when y'all go back, if y'all think about every hairstylist that is ever that y'all have ever done, has any hairstylist that y'all have ever been to? I'm talking about the good ones. I'm talking about the one your mama used to take you to. I'm talking about when your hair was slanging and banging, the best hairstylist you've ever been to. Forget the dusty ones that you've been. I'm not talking about none of them. For I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about one of the best stylists you've ever been to. Your hair was slanging and banging. Did she layer a product on top of your head? Did she use the lock method or did she shampoo your hair, condition it, spray some leave in, blow dry your hair, put a little serum on it, and then call it a day? Did she put four or five different products on your hair first? Did she sit you under the dryer to let your hair uh, air dry for 12 hours? Or did she put a blow dryer to your head? Did, like, what are we talking about? What are, what are we talking about, y'all? Like, come on. And now all of the people who got y'all doing this, they didn't all went back to their hairstylist. They all are now going to professional hairstylists. Now, what can I use to exfoliate my scalp in here? I feel like I'm doing everything I need to do, yet I do not ever see sebum. I'm trying to, listen, you guys. Don't get mad at me when I say this. I say things that I'm I, I'm about to say it like this because I need you to picture this in your head. Right now. Right now. I need you to go to a mirror. Hurry up. Go. Go, 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 go. Or use your phone as a mirror right now. You have a hundred thousand follicles on your scalp. By follicles, let's stop saying follicles. There are one hundred thousand little holes on your scalp each one of those a hundred thousand holes has sebum so let me ask you a question if if the hole right is going to be slightly large enough for the oil to fit out correct if you cannot visually see a hole on your scalp why do you think you can visually see the sebum because on YouTube, y'all are so used to people taking a bottle of do grow oil and squeezing it on the scalp, and you used to seeing oil and product dripping. Y'all think that sebum that's coming out of your scalp is supposed to look the same way that oil looks dripping out of a bottle. If your follicle is microscopic, why do you think that the oil is going to be visual like that visual? Like, like to the point where you can just see it 
coming out your scalp the same way it'll look when you squeezing toothpaste out of a bottle. It's not going to look like that, babe. I'm not trying to be dusty, but you have to, and this is for everybody listening to the sound of my voice. If you want to change the way that your hair routine is going, you are going to have to kill all everything that you think that you know, everything that you've learned, Team Natural, you got to kill all of that. None of that is going to work, not with the stuff that I'm giving you. Other people, and I'm not saying my way is the only way, but with what I'm giving, YouTube hacks don't fit. You will not see, visually see sebum come out of your scalp the way that you see oil being squeezed out of a bottle. It don't work like that. Your follicles are microscopic. The oil is going to be microscopic. If you put an electron microscope up to the follicle, you're going to clearly be able to see that oil come out, babe. You will not see oil come out of a microscopic follicle. You will not see the oil that is protruding its way out of a microscopic hole. That is why you have to comb your hair and brush your hair. And it will spread across your hair shaft. You have 400, uh, anywhere between 100,000 and 400,000 strands of hair on your head. Do it feel like that to you? When you look at it, absolutely not. But that's what it is. You guys, stop trying to see products. Yo, the oil and the products that y'all squeeze on y'all scalp, it's not supposed to look like that. You're not supposed to have that much product on your hair. That's not normal. So y'all want something that's not normal to be the 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 number one stamp of approval this is as long as it look like it's squeezing out of a bottle as long as it's dripping no hair should not be dripping in product y'all love that word slip oh it was slip your hair should not feel slippery that's not good oh it was oily the oily hair slippery hair locked hair these are not words that should be used to explain your hair it should not. And by you trying to hold off washing your hair is what's blocking your sebum. That's what's blocking your sebum. Your sebum is coming out of a clean follicle. If your follicle is not clean, there is no sebum coming out. Not washing your hair will not increase the oil. If you have oily skin, it don't matter how many times you wash your face in a day, there is going to be more oil on your skin. There is no difference between the, the sebaceous glands on your face and the sebaceous glands on your head. The only difference is those glands have more uh, hair per follicle and the hair shaft is, it has a higher density. It's thicker. That's the only difference. <laughs> See, I just answered that question. No, no, guys, the, your, your follicle is microscopic. If the follow, if you can't see your follicle, why would you see the oil that's coming out? None of you can see the open follicle. Not one of y'all. Nobody can just look with the naked eye and see their follicles, the naked follicles. So why would you see the sebum coming out? It makes no sense, y'all. Come on, y'all. I'm telling y'all, like, YouTubers got y'all acting act, like... <laughs> Like YouTubers have it so y'all don't use common sense anymore. And I'm not being disrespectful to y'all. I'm just like y'all. Our serum safer. No, it's not a matter of what's safer. It's when the products are tools. No product is unsafe. They're tools. Essential oils is a tool that you use if you have some type of infection or imbalance. You're treating something with an essential oil. A carrier oil carries the essential oil for the treatment. A carrier oil can also be used to hold a butter for length retention. So a carrier oil carries butter, carries essential oil. That's how it goes. And a serum... A serum is meant to go deep within the hair shaft. A serum can do something that a, a essential oil can't do, that a carrier oil can't do, and that a butter can't do. 
They all have their own roles. So no, an essential, a, a serum is not better than essential oil. A serum cannot do what an essential oil does. An essential oil and a serum are not the same thing. And that's why I'm making this video because y'all have been being listening to product junkies for so long that y'all think like, for example, they're like, oh, I don't even need no leave-in conditioner, just use oil. It's not the same product. A oil's not going to do for you what a leave-in conditioner did. They're two completely different products, two completely different tools. It's like using a rake to cut down a tree. They're two completely different tools. That's what people need to understand. Two completely different tools. No, a serum is not better than an oil uh, uh, or an essential oil. And an essential oil isn't better than a serum. They're two completely different tools. Okay? <laughs> Thank you for not being mad at me, Maya Boo, because I... I I didn't want you to be mad at me because I didn't want to talk about the relaxer conversation. It just irritates me so bad. I stopped applying oils to my scalp and I'm seeing great results. I stopped applying food, Lord, avocado, etc. My hair is thriving and getting healthier. It receives from, listen, listen, it's recovering from the hair weathering. Thanks, Ian. No problem, Linda. Listen, food belongs in your belly, baby. You you see a person telling you to put food in your hair. You have found a person who has ran out of ideas on videos to make. I'm sorry. Like food belongs in your belly, baby. And if you want to use food in your hair, then you know what you got to do. You have to go through a big process. So you want to use avocados in your hair. You need to buy one of those thousand dollar machines that after you press the oil out, because I have a video telling you how to extract the oil from an avocado because you can do it in the sun. And after you get that oil out, I also need you to go put it in a second machine. And within that second machine, then it'll be the type of oil that you can use on your ends. But y'all, listen, y'all, man, y'all better stop listening to these people. The, these people not even listening to themselves no more. And I told y'all at the end of last year, I have a prediction video and every prediction I made came true. I told y'all that everybody that y'all listened to was going to come back and be like, I don't want to do this team stuff no more. And they was all going to hairstylists and what's been happening. Are they as dangerous as coconut oil? Is what is dangerous as coconut oil? Hi, what moisturizer or serum would you recommend for dry, relaxed hair? Um, this is the thing, uh, go to my Amazon store and just look at serums because this is the thing. A serum is not a, before you get a product, you need to address why your hair is dry because what are you buying the serum for? And I'm just being real. Like, what are you, what are you getting the serum for? Because if your hair is dry from your relaxer, then it's a possibility that your hair is over processed. And that the bonds have been broken down too much. So it doesn't matter what serum I tell you. Like, I'm, I'm going to tell you, like, hey, here is my Amazon link. I'm going to leave my Amazon link in the description box when this video ends, right? But if I just leave it there, I'm just like everybody else. Because a serum, no matter what serum I tell you, it's not going to fix what's wrong. It's not going to fix why your hair is dry. So that's what I'm trying to change. Like, this moment right here is what I'm trying to change. Not... Oh, freaky YouTubers like, no, what I'm trying to change is you going from, oh, my hair is damaged. What product do I use? No, products do not fix your hair. Your routines and your patterns changing is what's going to fix your hair. So you have to first tackle the cause. Why is your hair dry? That's what we need to do. I don't, I love y'all so much, but I don't just recommend products. Just to be recommending products. I need to know why is your hair dry? If we figure out why your hair is dry, then I could tell you what serum to use. But I don't know why your hair is dry. Oh, no problem, babe. It's no problem. Just please spread it. And let's stop spreading stupid stuff that girls are making up in their room. It's so dumb. 
Is this a no-no for the scalp? I have dryness. This Yes, don't. Please don't put that on your scalp. Don't put it on your scalp. If you have dryness and discoloration, that means that you have an overproduction of sebum, which is throwing off your skin cell turnover cycle. You only supposed to have dead skin cell turnover every 28 days. But whenever you see a buildup or overproduction of dead skin cells is because something within your pattern, something within your routine is not allowing your dead skin cells to turn over. And you have too much either some type of bacteria infection, too much sebum, maybe too much sweat. I don't know. Product buildup from years of grease in the scalp or other stuff. So many different things could be going on within the follicle. But when you see what looks like dandruff, what looks like dry scalp, what looks like patches, that is an in, influx of skin cell turnover. Instead of your skin, skin cells turning over every 28 days, they turn it over like once, once every couple days, once a week instead of every 28 days. So again, you need to go back to the drawing board to figure out why your edges and your scalp are like that. Because discoloration means that you have a scalp disorder, some type of infection. If it's dry, that means that the sebum is blocked. And if there's discoloration, that means that there's some type of bacteria infection. You have to tackle that. No, you do not need to use that type of acid. You need to figure out what patterns have led you to the place that you're at right now is what you need to do. So y'all, if you could change one thing about your hair growth health, what would it be? Like, tell me right now in the comments, what would it be? If you could change one thing, what would it be? Never use oil on your hair. And I'm not saying never use oil. Like, for example, I don't, YouTubers taught y'all, as soon as you wash your hair, what you're supposed to do is get a whole bottle of oil and just throw it on your hair. That's so stupid. And it's such a waste of your money. Yes, I tell y'all to detangle with oil, but you don't just throw it on your hair just to throw it on your hair. If you are detangling your hair and as you comb it, you come across the spot that's hard to get through. Don't force your comb through it. Put a little drop, a little drop. Do you hear me? A little drop of like a hemp seed oil. I love hemp seed oil because a little goes such a long way and it relaxes the cuticle. It make it kind of, oh, let me take a nap. Oh. And then you just comb through and detangle your hair with that little bit of oil. You don't put the whole bottle of oil on your hair just to wash it off. That's so stupid. I'm sorry. I don't care if you feel away. That's stupid. Provana leave-in spray and silk serum is all my stylists use for me and my silk press. And that's all I use at home. Listen to me. And I bet that's what I'm talking about. Thank you so much for sharing that. Thank you so much for sharing that. Because professional stylists are only using, after they use the shampoo and conditioner, we are only using a leave-in conditioner and then a heat protected spray as we flat iron and a serum when we finish. Three freaking products and y'all use it 37 before y'all even touch the flat iron. Like, no, hairstylists, professional hairstylists do not use that many products. Only play hairstylists do. Is it bad to air dry your hair after washing it? Absolutely. Yep, sure is. Can't stand it. Can't stand it because after you air dry it, you the, once when your hair is wet, when your hair is going from wet to dry, you are taking the hydrogen bond and you're setting the hydrogen bond, right? From alpha keratin to beta keratin. Alpha keratin is this because your hair is made of keratin. Alpha keratin and do your research. Like type it in. Alpha keratin, beta keratin. Type it in, research it. I'm not making this up. I, it sounds like it may be because I'm talking so fast, but I've been doing this for 17 years. Alpha keratin is your hair in its natural state. When it's wet, it don't have no products in it, nothing. Beta keratin is the new state that your hair is in until it's wet again. For example, you get a silk press, right? When you wash your hair, or let's not even talk about flat iron. You, you get a roller set. You wash your hair and up until your hair is dry under the dryer, it's an alpha keratin. No, that's not true. Sorry, 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 sorry. You get a roller set. 
right before she puts the the foam wrap in your hair so after the shampoo is washed out after the conditioner is washed out before any product is used that is your hair in beta keratin beta keratin while the hydrogen bond is broken the hydrogen bond is the bond in your in your hair that is temporarily broken by water temporarily broken by water right alpha keratin is when that bond is broken when your hair is in its natural state no product whatsoever beta keratin is the new state that your hair is in so when you go from a just your hair in its natural state to a roller set after the rollers are out the roller wrap is done like everything is cute that is beta keratin and your hair is in beta keratin until you break the hydrogen bond again with water. Once you break, once you're in beta keratin after your roller set is done and you introduce water into the hair again and you completely shampoo the hair out, then your hair is back in alpha keratin. And then you use certain products, certain tools like a leave-in conditioner, like a foam wrap, right? To get the hair back in beta keratin. That's what we learn in cosmetology school. That is the science of hair. So when we are talking about air drying your hair, when you air dry your hair, right? You take your hair from wet in its natural state straight to beta keratin. And then your hair is supposed to be just like it is. However your hair air dry is how it's supposed to stay until you wet it again. So. From you knowing that, you answer that question for me. Do you think you should air dry your hair? If the safest way to manipulate your hair is to only manipulate your hair when it is in alpha keratin, to switch it to beta when the hydrogen bond is set, which is when it's 100% dry. So you answer that question for me, knowing what I just told you, do you think it's better for you to operate on your hair and to manipulate your hair when you air dry it and it just dries like that in beta keratin or when you can manipulate it straight from alpha? This is why a professional hairstylist, she not sitting you over in the corner and letting you air dry for 45 minutes and then blow drying your hair unless she a dusty one. Because a good pro knows that she has to make sure that she's taking you from alpha keratin to beta keratin in a safe way, or your hair is going to get broken, period. No, it is not a good idea to air dry your hair. That is just my professional opinion based on what I just said. People can take it however they want to take it. I don't really care. Not you. Not I don't care about you, but I'm just saying. Do you have a remedy program for balding men? No, because a follicle is a follicle, babe. Um, the only difference is, well, I, you can book a one-on-one. -on -one. I actually do do one-on-one -on -one consultations and I have men for one-on-one -on -one consultations. You can book me for one-on-one -on -one and I can give you more consult there. But yes, I do. I use a microscope. That sebum is definitely there. But then, Charity, you probably see that you don't, the sebum that you see under the microscope, you probably can't see it like you see it with a microscope with the naked eye, right? Just like your skin is shedding right now. Listen, your, our skin is shedding as we speak. You have oil on your fingers. You can't see that. Yep. So you better say that. Mm -hmm. Being sensitive to it plus genetics, you need prescription drugs, aka. Okay? No, that's not what you need. No, that's not true. Because this is the thing. Testosterone, and this is, and I'm not getting on you, boo, but this is why you can't just read articles and you have to study. Because that's just part of an article that you read. Yes testosterone converts into the body into DHT and the DHT attacks that follicle but guess what there are things that you can eat that keep the body from from converting the testosterone that women and men have in their body to DHT so onions onions and sulfur sulfur helps to prevent the body DHT from attacking 
the follicle, right? You are what has the most powerful level of sulfur in it, onions. That's why y'all see these people putting onion juice in their hair. But did y'all know that you just adding it to your diet or you drinking onion peel tea, drinking onion peel tea, not putting it in your hair, but drinking it gives your body the amount of sulfur that it needs to stop the testosterone from converting into DHT and attacking the follicle in the first place. So it's not that it's something that can't be reversed. You just need to figure out what you can do to put into your body to start to fight off things because that's what we don't understand. Everybody with hair care, y'all want to fight everything from an external level, not understanding that once you turn 30, your body stops producing certain amino acids. How can you get the amino acids? You have to eat them. You're not getting the amino acids that the body is no longer producing by putting it in your hair. You get those amino acids by eating them. You don't put the products in your hair. It's a difference. Hi, I get heat damage. What steps would I take to already start trimming next three weeks? Well, second trim. You have heat damage. Who gave you your heat damage? I can't really, I don't, I need more information like that. And if y'all have like personal, personal, personal questions like that, I love y'all, but y'all got book of one on one link in the description. I'll put the link in the description or on my website. I'll put the link to my website there, but you could book a one on one. You got me for an hour. You can ask me whatever you want. Would you recommend serum from Olaplex? I use all of Olaplex's products. Again, you guys, what products are tools? Don't just say, Cynthia, do you recommend this product? What are you using it for? Because no, I don't recommend that. I actually don't want y'all to just, oh, my hair messed up. I'm just going to buy Olaplex. I don't want you to do that. You know why? Because then that's when people be like, Olaplex didn't work. You don't know what you needed it to fix. You, you don't just go walk into a store and get a medication and be, oh, I'm going to get that drug without knowing what, what your problem is. What, are, what disease are you trying to cure? What is the problem? What is the cause? You need to learn all of those things before you get a product. Like everybody, oh, Olaplex 3 didn't work. What did you think it was going to do? Most of the women that say Olaplex 3 didn't work are women who have layers and layers and layers and layers and layers of product on their hair. They've been following Team Natural and Team Natural just switched over to Olaplex. And now y'all all all pulling Olaplex on your hair. Oh, it ain't work. You have to figure out what you need, right? What exactly do you need to do? What do you need to accomplish? What are you trying to heal? Then I can answer the question. I can't answer questions like that. Okay. I'm late joining, so I may have missed it. But when I blow dry and flat iron my hair, when exactly is serum supposed to be used? At the very end, if you need it. I love y'all so much. And I'm I'm really sorry, Alicia, if, if I'm not answering a question the way that you want me to answer it but I did hair for 17 years and it wasn't until my what my like my seventh year in the industry that I actually mastered a silk press so a serum isn't supposed to be used until the very end you know like the videos where I snatched the bag off the head the serum is used at the very end for me right for my clients right before I put them under the dryer then I put the serum on but when you are silk pressing your hair, I'm just being real with you. Like you may not get the same results as me, as, as I get or other women on social media. And I don't think that that should be something that you aspire to because you doing your hair right now for the first time. I've been doing it for 17 years from 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 six o'clock in the morning to 10 o'clock at night. I'm doing 15 women in one day for 17 years. So I'm going to do it better than you. Like th there's when I learned how to do hair, it wasn't because I asked somebody that I saw doing it good and was like, hey, how you? And I'm not saying it's directly to you. This is for everybody. Like I, I didn't I didn't say like, oh, girl, how you do that? What exactly do you use with the serum? How you put it on? How you hold the blow dryer? Oh, like that. OK, bet I got it. No, hair don't work like that. Hair like you got to get in there. So I, you need to get a mannequin 
get a mannequin with really curly hair and constantly practice. Like I didn't learn how to silk press or how to do hair the way I do hair from watching one or, or from listening to anybody or from asking a question like this is trial and error. You have to practice. There's no like little quick trick I can tell you. Like the process goes shampoo, conditioner, leave-in conditioner uh, right before I blow dry. And after I get done blow drying, then I use heat protectant as I go. And then the serum at the very end before they go into the dryer. And that's it. That's how I do silk presses. I've seen someone co-washing their hair with grease cringe when I see it. Listen, because they monkey see monkey do. I never got the whole put food in your hair thing anyway. Everybody want to be tacos and burritos so bad. My white friend uses uh, on her hair. She be doing that. I gave her your name. She said her stylist told her to use it. Listen, y'all, first of all, y'all y'all have been saying for years that cosmetology school don't matter and licensing don't matter, the science of hair don't matter. So women stopped going to school and studying the science of hair a very long time ago. Like, we have to understand that to every action, there's a reaction and there are consequences to our actions. And as black women, our consequence to our action following up behind YouTubers over the last 12 to 13 years, the majority of the cosmetologists like me have quit. I quit doing hair, y'all. I quit. <laughs> The majority of the good cosmetologists like me have quit and moved on. I just still love the hair industry and I'm into the science of hair now. So I'm still here to give y'all the consult. But the majority of cosmetologists have quit and moved on to other things because all y'all have cared about is the YouTubers. So yes, the majority of y'all hairstylists are telling y'all to do the same stuff that YouTubers are telling y'all to do because they don't know nothing either. Like, <laughs> listen, this is what y'all asked for. But who cares what your hairstylist tells you to do? If your hairstylist tells you to jump off a bridge, you're going to go jump. If you look at the ingredients of the back of the of apple cider vinegar next to zinc, next to every type of botanical vitamin, it's going to say 0%. It has no nutritional value. Apple cider vinegar is acid. It is pure acid. You can research that by yourself. Just because her client, her stylist told her to do that don't mean she should do it. Like, And this is the thing, you don't need a moisturizing process. Who told y'all that? Like, I'm telling y'all, it, it, it's like, we, as black women, we don't even, we y'all speak like YouTubers. Like, that's not a thing. You have to moisture, your scalp has a natural moisturizer called sebum. Moisturizing your hair is simply combing it. Like, <laughs> it's crazy. I would like my split ends fixed. You cannot fix your split ends, my love. There is no fixing split ends. Your, your hair shaft is not a healable resource like your skin. If you cut your skin, your cells are going to repair themselves. Your hair shaft is not that way. Once your ends split, they will continue to split up the hair shaft. And once they reach the follicle, they will split into the follicle. And once the follicle splits all the way, then that hair bulb that was attached to the blood supply then detaches itself from the blood supply. And then you start going bald and different forms of alopecia set in. It is a fact. I've been doing this for 17 years. That's what happens when you don't trim your hair. There is no such thing as healing split ends. Once your ends split, they are split forever and they will continue to split up the hair shaft. There is no healing them. You can put a temporary filler on them. You can put a temporary band-aid on them, but eventually it will split up to the root. Hairstylists are not scissor happy. They will want y'all to understand that if you do not trim your hair every 10 weeks, your ends will continue to split. And once they split up the hair shaft, you will go bald 
point blank period. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. But most black women don't want to argue or most women don't want to argue with their clients. So they be like, all right, I'll cut a little bit this time. But in the back of her head, she know that ain't going to help nothing because everything she cut off going to be right back. It's going to be right back by the next time she see you, if not worse. So... Oh, thank goodness you said this. I love drying my hair with over hair dryer. Can't stand air drying. It literally takes my hair three to five days. And this is the thing. Even on top of you uh, sitting under a hooded dryer, don't just wash your hair and then just sit up under there. You won't do nothing to it. It ain't, it's not a flat twist. It don't have no fun. You just sitting up under there. Then you're going to rake through your hair after it's already been air dried, trying to straighten it out. Like, or girl, this girl, you know, not you. I wasn't saying, oh, girl, bye. Ooh, I wasn't saying that to you. I would change what what I would change will be to never have applied herbs in my hair. Yeah, I please, y'all, please stop doing that. Like, stop doing that unless you're trying to treat something. Like, there's a video on my channel or on my other channel where I teach you guys a couple of herbal remedies. There's a difference between using herbs as a remedy to heal something specifically one time and making it a part of your everyday hair routine. Like it's you drinking water. It's a difference. Like y'all, oh, these people. It would take hours to completely air dry my hair. And that's what I'm saying. Like they made y'all feel like y'all was doing something better because you air drying is worse. You not using a blow dryer is 10 times worse than you using a blow dryer. The women who, oh, I air dry and flat twist, you are damaging your hair more. A woman who, who air drying her hair, you and your hair for a whole day just waiting for it to dry versus a woman who blow drying her hair in her hair for 15 minutes. It's the craziest stuff I've ever seen in my life. It makes no sense to me. Why do they detangle hair with shampoo and conditioner then at salons? I don't know what salon you've been going. Listen, if you went to a salon that detangled your hair with shampoo and conditioner, you that's just the stylist that you went to and that's what she do. Do y'all not understand that every year, every year, there are over 30,000 women that graduate from cosmetology school every single year. So I multiply 30,000 times 15 years. That's how many women have graduated from cosmetology school since I did. There are so many hairstylists that good ones are like a needle in the haystack. And the reason that most of y'all running into these shitty hairstylists is because y'all going on social media and y'all go to the people that everybody else like, the ones that look the best, the ones who match what YouTubers saying, that's who y'all going to. But that's y'all fault. Every year, this is a fact, and the number is higher now. Research it, Google. How many hairstylists graduate cosmetology school every year? Every year, there are over 30 thousand stu students 30,000 new cosmetologists every year in the United States 30,000 every year multiply 30,000 times 15 somebody leave that number in the chat that's how many cosmetologists are out here every last one of them are not good just like every doctor ain't good just like every uh babysitter every teacher not good what are, we, what are we talking about? Every architect not good. Every real estate agent not good. They a dime a dozen. You got to look deep and hard for the good ones. The hair industry ain't no different. Every cosmetologist that comes straight out of cosmetology school ain't good. What do you mean? The no ones go back to school. Just teachers. Teachers don't just finish school and that's it. They keep going to school. There's a difference between a cosmetologist that only went to cosmetology school and one who has made the science of hair her life. There's a difference. And it's up to you to know the basics so you can pick them apart. You're not supposed to detangle with shampoo and conditioner. If you know the basics of hair, you know that don't make sense. Hair is hair weak is when it's wet or dry. Anybody who knows the science of hair is going to know the hair is weakest when it's wet. 
So then I'm gonna ask you, if the hair is weak, is when it's wet, when should you detangle the hair? When it's wet or when it's dry? Dry. So when you're looking for a cosmetologist, when you go for a consultation, you can ask. Um, I have a question. Do you, if if you have a client with matted and tangled hair, do you detangle their hair wet or dry? And then if she say wet, you oh okay. And you keep asking questions and all right, thanks so much. And then you leave and you don't book her. That's what a consultation is. But y'all don't do that. Y'all just randomly go sit in a salon and then y'all let her sit there and do whatever she want to do to y'all hair. And then when y'all leave, y'all get big, bad and bold and get on social media and talk about her instead of saying it to her face. That's what goes on. But this is basic common sense, man. Like, forget, oh, hairstylists do it in the shop, too. It's like, okay. But there are a lot of cosmetologists that would never detangle with water. I know them personally. A bunch of cosmetologists that hate it when people detangle with water, just like I do. But you have to find them. Nobody goes looking for them. Y'all want the people who are popular. And the people who are popular are popular because they do the stuff that make y'all feel good. And the people that y'all don't like are the people that go against the grain, like myself. Hey. Hey, Kali, my boo. How you doing, boo? Thank you for answering my question. Thankfully, I was really late to the natural hair game. I just went natural this year. I got four, ooh, <coughs> I got four, May six inches of growth. Ooh, ooh, not by oiling my scalp and following trends. Listen, center under the dryer makes restyling easier. Listen, the hair will hold the memory of the style. I can retwist every few days without product. Oh my God, oh my God, this woman here. This woman here, and look at her hair. Please understand me when I say I don't have a problem with you wearing your natural hair in the fro, but sis, do it in a way where you can set it. Look at this woman's hair. Look at this queen's hair. Did you hear what this woman said? She said, sit it under the dryer makes restyling easier for me. Most women who do flat twists be like, I, I, I'm not combing my hair because if I comb my hair, my twist is gone. My set... No, if you set your curls right, you can comb it and put the twist back in at night. Go to sleep, wake up in the morning, untwist your hair, wear your style. But you still got to comb your hair every day. That's the only thing that I'm trying to say. My God, my, my Lord, sweet baby Ray Jenkins. Oh, my God. Like, oh, sweet baby Ray Jenkins. Oh, oh. Is it safe to style your hair in your natural fro state and carry it like that into your next wash day? If that's what you want to do, then you do it. But no, I do not recommend it at all because I, I don't I don't like getting on. I don't like talking about that because then all the Black Panthers going to come out. Power to the people. We wake up like this. So we should wear our hair like this. And I I, I drastically disagree because we wake up with stank breath, but we don't walk around with our, I just don't, I don't, I don't think it's a good idea. If you, if you, I don't wear it fro, but if that's the thing and that's what you want to do, that's not a hairstyle. That's just your hair straight up it's in a fro. And if that's what you want to do, then you do it. But I, I that's I, I, I. my most important product is my deep conditioner. What is a good detox and shampoo? Check my Amazon store. My old hairdresser was flat ironing my hair without heat protecting. You shouldn't have been going to them, boo. You, you had me realize why other place three didn't work for me, <laughs> as I expected. It said, do it on dry hair, probably so. It could penetrate, yes, that 31%, but I wanted to get it past any buildup, so I washed it first. Listen, listen, 
Like, and that's everybody's problem. Nobody reads directions. And if they read them, they don't follow them because YouTubers told y'all them not to follow them. They don't follow the directions. Put essential oil in the Olaplex. Like, they're really YouTubers telling y'all to put extra fucking products and vegetables in Olaplex. Like, and y'all doing it. So whose fault is it? Theirs or yours? No, it's fine. I was just asking because I didn't understand. I think it's that's what it is too, though. I've just always seen people use it when they flat iron and blow dry. But yeah, I do. I use it every time. It's something that I always use, but at the very end. I want to use Olaplex because I did a lot and I've damaged my hydrogen bonds. I think that may be the right tool for the problem. It depends on how damaged the bonds are. So you was wondering if I really need to use it or not. I forgot what you was talking about, boom. Oh my God, who blocked Felicia? Did I block her by mistake? What in the world? I didn't block nobody. What in the hell? I don't know how to, I'll figure it out. I don't know how that just happened. Anyway. I brush my hair out every night to move the sebum down. That's what everybody should do. Just like you brush your tongue every morning to move the funk out. Yeah, I haven't did my oil moisturizing process in a long in a long while. And now my hair is easier to manage and less itchy. Yeah, because it's stupid. It is stupid. Your all moisturizing process, it is stupid. The only moisture that the hair needs is sebum. And the only process that you have to follow is, is keeping your scalp clean and brushing your hair. Oh, my God. And that costs you nothing. Oh, my God. I'm not saying it's a problem to do roller sets. That's not what I'm saying. I was just using that as an example. I'm never going to air dry again. I really hope you stop sitting under the dryer after styling. YouTubers and gurus had me thinking it was better for me. But from now on, y'all, don't blame them. Y'all didn't do y'all research. Everything that I am saying is Googleable. That's not a word, but it's Googleable. YouTube is owned by Google. Everything was Googleable. Y'all listen to these girls. Do y'all know these, most of these girls that y'all listen, that y'all was listening to, none of them are even 30 years old. Oop, I just hit my knee. None of these women are even 30 years old. Y'all have been grown women in their 50s, in 30s, 40s, and 50s, listening to 19, 20-year-old girls. And y'all wondering why y'all don't have no hair. Not you. But, like, come on. Do the math. Go look at some of the same girls y'all been listening to for the last nine, ten years. Some of them just now turning 26, 27. Some of them just now turning 25. And y'all been listening to them for the last six years, and they 25, just turned 26. You do the math. Come on, man. I can't understand what's wrong with using a comb. I don't know either. Finger combing blows my mind. Finger combing is the stupidest shit I've ever heard in my life. The average person has anywhere between 400, 100,000 and 400,000 strands. And you got, you got four fingers. So you mean to tell me you can detangle 100,000 strands of hair with four fingers? That's some stupid stuff. That is some stupid stuff. And everybody who started following them, I'm sorry. Don't get mad at me. You was being stupid. You, because you looked at them four fingers. And you looked at all them strands of hair on your head. And you still thought to yourself, this gonna work. My hair is completely detangled. You are just as stupid as they are. Not no more. Because you changing. But, but come on now. Come on now. We not about to blame them for everything. Mm hmm. Yeah, look, you see that? This is the thing. Peep, this is what I need y'all to see. I need y'all to see this number when y'all are like, all oh, these stylists are bad. Every year, you have over 30,000 hairstylists come out for 15 years. Look at that number. This is how many hairstylists have came out 
This how many hairstylists y'all got to filter through since the day that I got my license. Mm -hmm. For over 450,000. That's how many y'all got to filter through. So when you say, oh, I can't find no good hairstylists, all oh, hairstylists bad. It ain't no good hairstylists. The good ones are mixed up in between these 450,000. Yeah. And a lot of them quit. Because out of 450,000 hairstylists, your hairstylist already has to compete with them, whether they good stylists or bad stylists. But the majority of this 450,000 don't even know what the hell they doing. And the good one, I'm going to say out of 450,000, you maybe got 100,000, 150,000 ones like me. So you got to pick out about 150,000 good ones out of 450,000 bad ones. I mean, out of 450,000 collectively, it's 150,000 good ones. Is you not just going to be able to randomly walk into a shop and sit in a chair to distinguish which one is which? You have to know the basic science, the basics of the human body. Thanks for addressing my question. For the record, I style or roller set before the dryer. <laughs> you like, let's get this clear, boo. I'm not one of those dusty ones, all right? Let's be, let's, let's get it clear. <laughs> Thank you, Nancy. Girl, can I thank you? Girl, how can I thank you? I had a spot in my scalp that was thin and I thought I was going bald and it used to itch. I found your channel and stopped greasing my scalp and my hair is growing in that spot. Listen to me. Like, I I love y'all so much and I, I get on here and I'm so intense because it bothers me so much to see so many women going through balding and, and, and you getting billed by your goddamn insurance going to see your dermatologist and the fix to fix what is going on in your body is as simple as you not greasing your scalp that's some shit that makes me so irate sometimes i'm just being honest to see so many black women struggling with scalp issues and all you have to do is stop greasing your scalp and wash your hair oh my god that's all you have to do. It will cost you nothing. That's why my seven day challenge is only $35. People's scalp health is changing within two days. Within two days. Y'all can look at my reviews. I am not blowing smoke. People take my seven day challenge. It's only $35. And in less than two days, in less than 72 hours, that's three. In less than 72 hours. They are noticing that the burn and the itching, the redness, the boils, the bleeding, everything that they've been dealing with in their scalp is gone. Two days tops. Two days tops. It's that's where my fury comes from to watch black women that I, ew, it ain't nothing sexier than a black woman on this earth. Do you hear me? Hello. I don't care who feel away. Nothing. And if you're not black, I'm sorry. Because I know one of my boos in here not, and oh, like you, oh, you can be an honorary one. But it's like, listen, they're like nothing sexier. But the fact that black women are walking around with their heads down looking for the answer when they're the answer is the craziest shit that I've ever seen. And I can't, I, I won't stand for it. Like, I just can't. I just can't. And that's my hair when it's nat with its natural curls. I clump the curls with the brush and separate after. Listen. Yes, I still detangle every few days with a little oil. That's all I've been trying. That's all I've been trying to say. That's all I've been trying to say. Just, just detangle with oil. Stop wetting your hair. You can wear your natural, but set your curls. And then when you want to comb it out, when that's fine if you want to wear it like that, but get a process, get a non-comedogenic oil to detangle it so your hair not just sitting there because you lose it 50 to 150 strands a day and you need to comb them out. Literally all I've been trying to tell y'all. Oh, this is all I've been trying to say. Thank you so much, Karen Bear. Oh, I just, oh, I love you. I'm going to make you a moderator when we get out of here. Like I'm, I'm, oh, girl. Oh, girl. I've been wearing my hair in flat twists and coral rolls for the past month. 
and it has made detangling so easy. Listen, like it's not that deep. Get a process and look at you. Look at her sexy self. Oh, is that your hair? Oh, is that you? Oh, look, look. She been wearing it in flat twists. What does that mean? She preps her hair properly. And in those flat twists, she can still comb it out and detangle her hair and she good. But this, I don't want to wash it. Dirt make your hair grow. That's stupid. Thanks so much for this golden knowledge. Thank you so much for hearing me. What product do you do, use when blow drying? Boo, all you need when you blow drying is a leave-in conditioner, boo. That's all you need is a leave-in conditioner. And the product that you use next is going to be dependent on what you're doing in your hair. And if you need exact direction, join my seven-day challenge and I got you. It's only $35 to change your life. <laughs> yes, her hair is beautiful. Love this platform. Knowledge is spoken here. Oh, I love you for loving me. I love you. What product would I use when blow dry my hair? Yeah, leave in conditioner. Listen, boo, you is not playing with me. Jasmine Mitchell said, Are you did you gonna answer this goddamn question? What product do I use when I'm blow drying? A leave in boo. Okay. I'm arguing with my relative. This is Parmas Cocoa Butter Formula Moisturizer Oil is good for her. Don't seem good at all. Listen, stop arguing with people about what they want to do with their hair, boo. Stop arguing with people with what they want to do about that hair, my little lemon drop. Don't do that. You learning stuff about yourself and keep that knowledge with you. And this is what you do, lemon drop, okay? My little, little lemon drop, what you're going to do, you're just going to start making sure that your hair and scalp is thriving. And in a minute, they're going to be like, what you doing? What are you doing? Oh, my God, your hair looks so good. And then you just tell them, Oh, I do this, 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 and this. Basically, all of the stuff that you don't do, this is what I do, okay? You should try it and do that. Like, don't be stressing yourself out trying to make people do stuff. Don't do that. That's all. Oh, look, and look, this is how I know. She said, all me. That means she be saying that all the time. People like, is that your hair? Are those clippings? She like, no, boo. It's on me, and no, you can't touch it. <laughs> no, you can't touch it. No, you cannot. No, you cannot touch it. Thank you very much. Okay, no, you cannot touch it. All right? So, you guys, I really, really want you guys to take the conversations that we have here, not as me trying to come down on nobody, not as me trying to be combative and start stuff with other people. No, but to explain to you that there is a difference between a carrier oil, an essential oil, a butter, and a serum. And products are tools. And these tools are supposed to be used in specific ways. And you can't dictate to these tools exactly what and how they're supposed to be used. When you walk into a beauty supply store, before you walk into a beauty supply store, the first thing you need to know is, one, what issues am I having? What problems am I having? What am I trying to fix? What am I trying to accomplish? What do I need out of this store? Don't just walk in the store and ask the girl who work at Sally's, you know why? You don't got to go to cosmetology school to go work at no damn Sally's. You don't got to go to nobody's school for nothing to work at Sally's. You on YouTube, I mean, you, you online, you file an application, you get hired. You walk in there and ask one of them girls that, about a product at Sally's if you want to. Them women don't know nothing. You don't got to have no cosmetology license to work at Cosmoprof. You don't have to have a cosmetology license to work at Sally's. You need to know what you're going in there for before you go. Understand the human body before you go. All right? How much are my one-on-ones? Go on my website. You know, a lady doesn't quote prices um, here. But head over to my website. Hold on. Here's my website. Let me put it in. They're not $5. Let me just say that. All right, but head over to my website and then you'll be able to see it. I relax. Wait. 
I relax my hair is easy with dermatitis. I keep it simple. No bad way. I always shampoo the conditioner, leave on my hair. I do the same thing with the seven day challenge. Natural hair relax. Listen, like, listen to me. Like, I, I'm not just toting stuff with my seven day challenge because listen, peep game, right? The seven day challenge works for relaxed natural hair. And my seven day challenge isn't just for black women because the human scalp is the human scalp. The only difference between a black woman's scalp and let, let's say a Puerto Rican woman's scalp is the size of our follicles. So because our follicles are different shapes, our hair texture is different. The sebum comes down in different routes and rates. And we have to perform different actions to move the sebum down the hair shaft. That's it. Right. Oh, you was hoping for around two, two what? Two dollars? Two what? You was hoping for around two dollars. You are you missing zero, girl? You playing, Vicky? You are playing with me, but you girl, you is playing with me, girl. You thought you think I'm gonna give you a scientific consultation for two dollars? You ain't safe. You just playing. You playing, Vicky girl. You are playing with me. you, girl. You playing anyway. You because you went you. Oh, yeah, you playing. Girl, I was about to say, girl, I know you don't think I'm no little $2 hoe. I know you don't. Like, I know you ain't come on here trying to treat me like no little $2 hoe. I know you did not. But you just playing. Girl, don't be girl. Okay? <laughs> so, for our next one, all right? For our very next chat, I want to talk. I want to talk, all right? So can you relate? Are you having excessive shedding, low to no length retention, thinning, random bald spots, burning, and painful scalp, split ends, and single strand knots? So like, does any of this, do, do you fit into any of these categories? Any of these categories? No, nah, I ain't no, I ain't no $2, 304. You know what I'm saying? I ain't, I ain't no two dollar little drop top. It's no little drop top stop. No little, you know what I'm saying? You, you know what I'm saying? Like, Vicky can't even break out that fort. Listen, no. You have to finish the challenge, and then this is see. Look, you gonna be in trouble because are you one of those people? I have some people. It's like I'm gonna say maybe like. 40 people who like haven't finished the entire channel but listen do it at your own rate like at your own rate don't feel like you have to rush through or anything like that but also don't feel by yourself because if you can relate to anything that's on the screen you are not by yourself like there are so many people no I'm not and I'm, I'm low-key offended but she said she was playing I'm going to get my twin sister to stop using a cocoa butter spray. I don't want her to suffer. Oh, yeah. If that's your twin lemon drop, then you got to do it. But can we just talk about lemon drop real quick, real quick? So, and correct me if I'm wrong, lemon drop. But if I remember correctly, lemon drop is a woman who has been commenting on my videos or watching some of my videos. And she let me know that she has what wavy hair. Because remember, I told y'all all that 4B, 4C, 4W, 4XYZ is stupid. And we have three textures. We have straight, wavy, and curly. And oops, sorry, lemon drop let me know that she has wavy hair. And she fell into the whole diva cut, diva curl stuff too. Because that was their market. That's who they was really trying to get lemon drop right and she said okay uh, she started putting all that stuff in her hair and she had problems with her scalp and problems with her sebaceous glands so it's the same for all of us y'all like we're not it's not so like black and white like oh black women are over here white women are over here Samoan women are over here like it's just no Hawaiian women are here like no like we're all the same. And if we really sit there and focus on what makes us different and focus on our differences and share things with each other, then we'll be better. But it's not all so black and white. 
Listen, and then 40 what in quarters? Uh, what we're not about to do is sit here and talk about if whether or not I'm going to be paid in quarters because that's some book. This is not funny. Listen, I, I ain't did nothing for $40 in like, listen, the last time I did something for $40, I was probably like 22 years old. And this is when I was doing $40 silk presses, okay? Listen, there ain't nothing that I can do for $40 that's going to make me holler, okay? you think this is i ain't no cheap date no little cheap skate y'all better go on with the bush them them, them them whole prices them ain't even real whole prices i'm from the d and i know a bunch of pimps and i ain't doing nothing for 40 dollars. what type of type of fool do you take me for let's change the subject vicky vicky fox you about to be in trouble you about to be in trouble vicky the hell those ain't even trick prices this my husband we both from the d and i i ain't gonna say it's his uncle or my uncle but one of our uncles is a pimp and he would be mad as hell if he saw one of y'all trying to offer me 40 dollars the hell or 20 dollars or vicky you said two dollars at first vicky you gonna be in trouble i'm telling my uncle about you vicky i'm gonna be like uncle she she listen she just, somebody tried to make me a two dollar hoe on YouTube today. I'ma tell you better watch it, Vicky. Holler for forty dollars. What type of little cheap date do you take me for? Oh, yeah, Vicky, you gonna be pinching something. You gonna be pinching something else, Vicky. You gonna be pinching your ass. You better watch it. I know a bunch of pimps. You better you better watch it, Vicky. Anyway. Do we do we about to go because Vicky Yeah, you late. Vicky trying to make me. Yeah, Vicky, you about to be in trouble, Vicky. You better watch it. Vicky trying to she Vicky asked me how much I charge for, <laughs> for consultations because she need one. And then she was like, Oh, I thought you was gonna say two dollars. Then she went from oh, you went two dollars, you forty dollars. I'm a yeah, you you better watch it. But anyway. All jokes aside, you guys, if you fit any of these, then make sure that you go ahead and join the seven day challenge because everything is super simple. It's all about growth and maintenance. All you need to do is keep your scalp clean, make sure that no comedogenic oils or butters touch the scalp, and keep your hair dry and the hydrogen bond set and the hair in the beta keratin until your next wash day. It is literally that freaking simple. It's that simple, all right? I am washing my hair tonight. Yes, wash it tonight. Indian bull, when you wash it, make sure you set that hydrogen bond. We are going from alpha keratin to beta keratin, all right? That's what we doing. You not going to sleep with wet hair. We not doing that. We not air drying. We not doing none of that. My name is Wes and I ain't in this mess. No, you gonna be in it because we gonna be calling one of the pimps because I'm not no two dollar. I'm not a hoe at all, but I'm just they wouldn't be two dollars. Who trying to put they trying to put me on the stroll? Vicky trying to put me on the stroll, y'all. Vicky Fox is trying to put me on the stroll. I also want you guys to know that across my entire website, financing is coming on Monday. So if I have anything that is maybe a little bit too expensive for you that you can't afford, we're going to have a financing option for you to make smaller payments because I understand that everybody isn't at the place that they necessarily want to be where maybe you just don't want to spend a bunch of money at one time. So there will be payment options coming on Monday. So make sure if you have not done so already that you sign up for my mailing list. So that way you will be um, notified anytime I post anything new, anytime something is released. And also I'm having weekly blog posts go up packed with information and everybody who's been subscribed or everybody who is subscribed to my email list have been getting a bunch of email notifications for a new blog post. So make sure that you subscribe to my website. And then once you subscribe, you'll be notified whenever I do anything because I'm not just here on YouTube. All right. All right. <laughs> my name is Benny and I ain't any. <laughs>
No, no, no. Don't do that. Please don't do that. Love. Like, I know that it smells good. I know that it feels good. But the second you put an essential oil in your conditioner, whatever your conditioner was meant to do, it no longer does. And your hair feels good now. But on a regular basis, just yesterday, I did a one-on-one -on -one consultation with a woman who is dealing with extreme hair weathering because all she did was put essential oils inside of her shampoo and conditioner. Do not do that. For example, if you make a cake, right? If somebody just walk in and be like, I'm going to just put four drops of almond oil or of not sorry, of not almond oil, almond extract inside of your cake mix, that's going to change the entire recipe. Somebody putting in just three drops, somebody putting in just three drops, all right, of, of almond Almond extract inside of a regular vanilla cake is going to change the entire flavor of the cake. The same exact thing happens with products. You cannot mix essential oils in product formulations that are already performed. If you don't trust the product that you are using to not put anything in it, stop spending your money on it. As a professional cosmetologist, as an herbalist, I have never mixed any additional products inside of a product that is already formulated. Do not do that. That's YouTube stuff. And Sophia, you've been on my channel for a minute. Like, you don't do crazy stuff. You don't. That is one of the worst things you can ever do. And I am constantly healing women's scalp from doing exactly that. Whatever your product is meant to do, the entire chemical complex of it is changed when you add essential oil. Essential oil is sometimes more powerful than the additives that are already inside of the conditioner. Don't do that. I love y'all. Don't do that. Do you recommend a certain shampoo? I don't shop at the drugstore for a uh, shampoo and conditioner at all. Uh, people ask me to do, oh, can you do Walgreen hauls? I don't go to the drugstore for hair products, y'all. So uh, check in my um, Amazon store, and that's where all of my recommended products are. But I have no idea what products, what hair products are in the drugstore. I have no idea. Is this staying up? I'm not sure. Most likely, this is going to be um, only available for Guru Elite members. Most likely, it'll probably stay up to the end of the day, though. Trying to have my wife on the strip dips. They trying to make me to one of them little bit of strip dips. Trying to have me going fishing with them little bit of strip dips. I'm not going on no strip dip. Vicky trying to have me on the straw. Vicky, you in trouble for like the next, for the rest of this month, for the rest of the thing. For the next thing, don't you in trouble? I gotta get a call so that I can get caught up. <laughs> it felt appropriate, I guess. Anyway, we about to, cause now you disrespecting me, Vicky. So I'm gonna stop talking to you, cause now. Because can nobody even afford all of this, first of all? So not no pole, not no barber pole, not no pole, nothing. I just bought all the place last week and found your channel today. I've been binge watching. I got heat damage from a stylist. Glad I found your challenge. Your channel. I, don't, I didn't mean to say challenge. I'm glad you found me too, babe. Thank you for the blogs. Thank you for reading them, lovely. Just got shampoo conditioner with essential oil added the right way. Yeah, just get a... And the thing is, they have so many shampoos and conditioners that already have essential oils in them. And I use tea tree oil shampoo and conditioner. Yes, I'm relaxed now, so I need to test my porosity again to see if it changed. That's the thing. Don't add tea tree to your shampoo or conditioner. Get shampoo and conditioner that's been formulated with tea tree. Hey, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay, praise the Lord. I love you all so much. All right. 
So make sure that if you haven't done so already, you go ahead and join my groups, join my communities, head over to my website and make sure that you read all of my blog posts and subscribe to my website. So that way you can see everything over there. Give me a two if you want me to uh, show me, show you the website. Hold on. If you have to start something off saying no disrespect, then you probably should keep it to yourself. Especially if we talking about my husband, because I'm just not one of those people. No disrespect, but your husband is still paying, so it ain't cheap. I'm not disrespecting lady saying that my husband not paying for nothing. What are you talking about? That's the problem with people in nowadays in their relationships. Like me and my husband's relationship is very equal. He's not paying for anything. I don't go off that thing. He who finds a wife finds a good thing. I think that everything is equal. And I'm just as lucky to have him as he is to have me. And we're not paying for anything to be with each other. That's why we've been together for 12 years and it's still going that way. This man is my best friend. He ain't paying for nothing over here. I'm not for sale. So you you can you can only pay for something that's for sale. So my husband not paying for anything. We are just loving each other in unconditionally, and he is my life partner. That's what it is. He ain't paying for nothing, boo. I know not paying in that way, but don't don't. I'm just saying. Love y'all, but um, yeah, it's it's time. It is time to head out. Um, <clears throat> um, that's that's your take, boo. That ain't my take. We've been together twelve years. That ain't my take. Um, Wait, what happened? Nothing, babe. Just nothing. Just nothing. Just Lord. Can I say this before we go? This is why do I just want y'all to pay attention. When y'all watch this on replay, I'm going to leave it up to the end of the day. When y'all watch this on replay, I want y'all to see yourselves. I really want y'all to look in the comments and see yourselves. And see the way that y'all communicate and I want y'all to see the way this conversation went from talking about hair to talking about relationships and my husband paying for stuff and just it's just so weird how we go from like it's so weird like it's like you I don't know I'm not even mm -mm. I'm gonna stay on for a couple more minutes to take any more questions that somebody that anybody else has. Yeah, you got me. Just I'm gonna just stay on a little while longer to take any other questions that anybody else has, and then we're gonna go. Uh, most likely this will only be up for Guru Elite members. That's why I'm staying around for a couple more minutes just to give people a chance to ask any questions that they didn't get. Um, here is the link again. And even if it's not linking, I want you guys to simply type this into your browser, sinsmith.guru. So even if the link isn't going, then just type it in your browser. Praise the Lord. All right. Cause whoa, but let me know. I'm gonna just hold on one little bit more second just so everybody can get a time to get in there. But today we are only coming in here. I only came here to you guys and to answer this question right to answer this question that i keep getting or this comment that i keep seeing that's like i thought you said don't put oil on your hair just just wash it and leave it whatever uh-huh isn't that what you said like st statements like this statements like this mm -hmm. yeah and it's crazy too. I don't even really want to go here, but I do want to say this. Just this morning, me and my husband were talking about like starting a podcast together, a couple's podcast, not like giving relationship advice because that's not our thing. But me and my husband be having like some super deep conversations together. So I wanted to like me and him were talking about starting a podcast. And I told him this morning, I was like, I don't know if I want to start a podcast though, because 
like I keep my marriage pretty private. Like I'm not a person who posts a whole bunch of pictures of my kids on social media, my husband on social media. I don't do that because I like to keep my business, my business. So when I mentioned that to him, I was like, I don't know because people just like to go far left and make assumptions on your relationship and make comments. And I'm like, it's just so weird, you know? So I, that's why it's just like stuff like this is weird. You know, it's just weird. Tone is tone is difficult to articulate through text. This is why you think about what you say before you say it. Understanding that it's hard for somebody to understand your tone through your text. You figure out and you think about what you say before you say it. And you say things in a certain way, understanding that the person who's reading it can possibly take it the wrong way. So you make sure that when you type in something online by you understanding is you make sure that the words that are coming out of your mouth are going to be put together in a way that nobody will take the wrong way. So now that you know that you should probably start conducting yourself like you know that. I don't know you personally, but you're an intelligent, helpful person. I really wasn't. Try okay. I love you guys. I love you so much. We were here about hair. Um, we're here about hair. Um. Yeah, I, yeah. Okay. Glad I found, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Christina O. Thank you so much. Uh, Glad I found it out. I can wash my curly hair once a week because as long as it lasts myself. If I go to the salon, it lasts two weeks. Yes. Like, so just know you can wash your hair, your curly hair once a week. Like, just because your hair is curly, the only difference is it's going to take the oil a little longer to get from your scalp to your ends. It's just going to take a little longer. That's it. But you'll still get it. And you washing your hair isn't going to prevent it from getting there. It's just not the thing. Just like you washing your face isn't going to prevent sebum from coming out of your skin. It's the same thing, babe. So, yes, you can wash your hair. And I always say, don't go longer than two weeks. If you're going to go longer than two weeks, you need to start cleansing your scalp aggressively. All right? Deep conditioner frequently? No. I only deep condition once a month on my skin cell turnover week. Again, if you go ahead and join my seven-day challenge, then you will learn how to get to all of that. So real quick, give me a two if you want me to share the screen with you so I can show you my website so you can learn how to maneuver around before we head out. I mean, give me a two in the chat if you want me to share the screen with you. So you can figure out how to move around. Let me narrow. Let me narrow. Give me a two real quick. No problem, lemon drop. Remember, remember what I told you. Remember what I told you about like stressing yourself out about trying to make other people believe what you are now learning. All right. I couldn't remember. Thank you. I'm making my way home. No problem, babe. You're an intelligent lady. Thank you for your insight on here and direct with Fresh Rivera work. My hair is alive again. Oh, yes. Yes. You welcome, Mickey, but you've been stressing me out today. You welcome, but girl, in the church, girl. Oh, with the you've been playing with the church's money, girl. With all the church's money, girl. All right, we're just going to share my the screen real quick so you can see how to maneuver my website really quick. By the way, you guys, if you are wondering what I am using right now, I want you to put your eyes on this screen as you are seeing StreamYard pop up. StreamYard is so awesome sauce. So I'm freaking in love with StreamYard because StreamYard makes it so freaking easy for you to be able to do what I am doing right now. StreamYard is what I am using at this very second to stream for you guys and share different things on the screen and 
all of that. So make sure that if you are not doing so already, you are already using something like StreamYard because StreamYard is going to make it super duper easy for you to be able to do things like I'm doing right now, even though stuff is active. Weird. Hold on. Give me 2.5 seconds for me to make sure this thing is loading because I think I have too many windows open. Yes, I did. Hold on one second. I'm going to go back to share. All right, so here is my website. This is the way you operate. So if you are a person, see, look, first of all, real quick sidebar, remember to go ahead and watch the video that I did yesterday teaching you guys how to make money online um, on autopilot. So I want y'all to pay attention to something. Like I just said, I'm using StreamYard right now. I am not putting StreamYard at the top. My website is monetized. So the same way that ads run on my YouTube channel and I get paid for the ads that run on my YouTube channel when people watch them, I also get paid by the ads that these same brands run on my website. So I'm using StreamYard at this very second. And at this very second, StreamYard is also paying for ad space on my website. So for one, let's say you go on my website and you don't buy nothing. If you just click this button right here, it helps your girl so much. Just click it. It helps so much. Anyway, so if you are on my website and you have joined Guru One-on-One, Guru VIP or Guru Elite, or you want to, this is how you do it. When you click on more, you go right under memberships. And when you click on memberships, it will take you directly to the membership portal. So once you um, join one of the memberships, right? So here is Business Guru or CEO Masters, Guru One-on-One, Guru Elite, which is where this video will be or all other videos to get taken off of my YouTube channel. And then we have Guru VIP, which is where all my long form video, all of my long form video content that teaches the deep, deep stuff on the science of hair that answers the questions that I just simply can't answer here online, right? So whenever you are logged in, these are the different um, avenues that you have access to. Of course, it's not going through now because I'm not logged in. But when you're logged in and you have this membership, you can go ahead, click the login button, which I'm not doing right now. And then boom, it will take you straight to this page. And it's like that for all of these pages. You're not able to access any of these pages unless you have that membership, all right? So that is something that we are doing and that is what my website is about. So if you want to join Guru One-on-One or anything like that, then you can do it straight from there. And then also if you go on the home page of my website, you can go ahead and join the seven-day challenge, all right? I love you guys so much and I will see you until next time. Until next time, until next time, I'll see you later. So make sure that you guys, if you want to go ahead and watch this through, I'll probably leave it up maybe for two more hours and then you'll only be able to find it on Guru Elite. So check it out. Love you guys so much. If you need help and a step-by-step -step breakdown on how to get past all of these barriers that you've been behind, then sign up for my seven day challenge through this live. There have been multiple people who take my seven day challenge, who've shared their experiences, go back, read through the chat and see what they had to say. I love you guys so much. And I just want to say, to all of you who listen to what I have to say and hear me, thank you so much for letting me express myself in this way. Thank you so much for not being as soft as wet tissue and able to <laughs> hear what I have to say without taking everything that I have to say. So personal. I appreciate you. And the rest of y'all, some of y'all got on my nerves today. So when we talk about the bad apples, this world budget, it was a couple of funky apples in here today. And y'all got on my nerves. I ain't gonna lie. If it wasn't for them, y'all probably could have got another hour out of me. But not today. I love y'all. And bye, Callie Ma. I appreciate you guys so much. And I will see you later. Bye-bye. I'm trying to end it with my cute voice. Like, I'll see you guys later. Make sure that if you haven't done so already, you subscribe here to my channel. And then click on that bell notification so you're notified every time I post another video. Bye. <laughs>